Earlier this month, we visited the federal courts of the Northern District of New York. There, we talked to the clerk of the court. We cover about 33,000 square miles, with 350 miles of the northern border with Canada along the St. Lawrence River. I've been with the court 37, almost 38 years in January. Mr. Behrman shared with us the rich history of this part of the nation. And at one time, you know, going all the way back to 1789, the District of New York was one of the first districts created in the country. Susan B. Anthony's trial was, was um, tried in the Northern District of New York. So anything that deals with the Constitution in the United States as well is going to be brought here. And originally that was what the federal courts were all about is, you know, deciding issues that revolved around the Constitution of the United States. We were especially interested in understanding how the federal courts of Northern New York differ from those in other parts of the state and around the country. We were able to find two key issues this court sees more often than others. Prisoner cases and civil rights cases. There are about 32,000 prisoners within the 32 counties of the Northern District. Mr. Behrman says these prisoners file two types of cases, civil rights cases and habeas corpus cases, or wrongful imprisonment is a habeas proceeding in most of these are state habeas cases. Uh, so if you did a crime in the state court and you were convicted of murder for instance and you say well hold it the evidence wasn't right I didn't have representation that was proper whatever the legal issues are that you raised they're going to file a habeas corpus petition. About 20 percent of the cases or maybe a little bit higher than 20 percent are civil rights violations and they can they can come in all different types of things. So, Maybe you have a particular religious belief and the, the, the state's not providing you with access to that. Um, maybe uh, the medical um, uh, issue that you have isn't being attended to properly. Maybe you get in a scrape with some guards and you say, you know, they roughed me up and um, then they retaliated against me and, and beat me up. Those are the types of things that come out of the civil rights violations that occur in prisons. So why is this unique to the Northern District of New York? Northern New York has long-term facilities. There are certain cases that arise more frequently if an inmate is imprisoned for over a year. If you are incarcerated in the Eastern or Southern District, they don't have the long-term facilities down there. So some of the types of actions aren't going to get brought there. You're not there long enough to have medical indifference or retaliation, you know, if you're claiming that the guards retaliated against me. Usually those things are more long-term. Usually see those kinds of causes of action being brought out of longer-term facilities. The district also hears a lot of social security cases. This means that people are asking for benefits, typically medical relief from the Social Security Administration. Big backlog, these are people that don't know whether or not they're gonna get benefits. So they're in a very difficult spot. They've been denied benefits by the Social Security Administration. So are they entitled or are they not entitled? And they need to know, one way or the other. We asked him why this is unique to the Northern District of New York. In uh, older industrialized portions of the country where the industry has now kind of shut down and hasn't re-geared, there are pockets in the country where you see higher rates of filing of Social Security cases. Does it, is there a correlation there between, you know, the, the economic viability of a particular area? I think there might be. Probably, you know, do some research on this. So we did. According to the New York State Office of the Comptroller, from 2000 to 2008, manufacturing declined by nearly 28% in upstate New York, representing a loss of nearly 105,000 jobs. Uh, you know, I've been here 37 and a half years. Almost every employee I have He's been here since the day I've hired him. We have a, a terrific staff. Um, we care greatly about what we do. I mean, I think we have great pride in this court. Judges all the way down to every deputy clerk and every law clerk uh, you know, take great pride in, in making sure that we're, we're offering the best service that we can offer to the public. And I think the judges are just incredible in the jobs that they do. Uh, so for a career for, for me as the clerk of the court, I couldn't have asked for a better career. 